What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing the full review of the Hoover Max Life Power Drive Swivel XL. Now this particular unit is model UH75110, and I acquired this from my local Walmart for $98. And you can find very similar machines to this anywhere from $98 up to around $180. There are upgraded versions of this unit with headlights and different styles of attachments, different colors, possibly longer cord and longer hose, not sure about that, but either way, more features, the most notable one being the headlights. This model does not have headlights, but other than that, it's basically the same machine as a lot of the other newer power drives and high-performance swivel models that Hoover has come out with recently. This exact model does also go by the name of the high-performance swivel, and other than that, is pretty much an identical machine. Maybe the color is a bit different, but it's basically the exact same machine. So, this particular example, I like I mentioned before, I got this from my local Walmart for $98, and I've been checking it out, using it as my daily driver ever since I got the machine a couple weeks ago. And this machine has been pretty solid. As far as the general overview of this machine and whether or not my first impressions video have changed going into this full review, there isn't much that has changed. After using it for an extended period of time, I can say that it is a pretty impressive machine. However, we're going to go into more details throughout this review, and at the end, we'll compare it to some other machines and see if this is worth your consideration for a bagless upright vacuum in this price range. So, starting off, we're going to just do a basic overview of the machine. Some papers fell. And we're just going to see what all this has to offer. So, first thing it has, this is a corded machine. After all, this is not a cordless, as you would expect. I could not find any official word on the cord length. It appeared to be 25 feet, but I could be wrong. It could be 30, but my instinct is that it's 25 feet. I couldn't find any official Hoover spec on that, but either way, for this price range, it's a pretty solid length of cord. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either. So, looking at the front of the machine... We have the deep clean brush advertisement. We have the marker right here that says to step and recline because this machine does not have a handle release pedal. It just has a friction lock for the upright locking mechanism. We can see the brush right here. The brush reminds me a lot of brushes on very old Hoover Elite vacuums where it has a row of bristles that are just simply bare and you just have the brush roll. It actually has only one row, of, well I guess two rows of bristles where it has four rows, or would this be considered four? No, they'd be considered two. Now, regardless, there is a strip that doesn't have bristles on it, and that's just something to note. We have a four position high adjustment, which has a knob to turn. So you can essentially just turn this dial to each of the settings, and it is kind of funny how it kind of locks into other positions that aren't advertised, but for the most part, you have hard floors, low pile carpets, medium carpets, and high carpets. One thing to note, when you put it on the bare floor setting, or when you have the machine upright, the brush roll does not shut off. This machine just has a stretch belt that drives this brush roll, and there really is no way to shut off the brush roll unless you just completely remove the belt. So there is no switch or pedal or dial or anything that shuts off the brush. So if you have primarily hard floors, or are you going to be using this thing primarily for above floor cleaning? That is something to note. This is more so a machine for that's to be designed if you have more wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, or at the very least, a very good amount of carpet. Now, one good thing is that if you look at the bottom of the machine, it does have rubber-coated wheels, so that way that makes it work a little bit better on bare floors. You can tell the wheels are a bit noisy. The wheels are a bit noisy for some reason, even though the vacuum is still pretty much new. We have a little felt seal right here. It's kind of hard to see because it's black on black. But we do have a small felt seal here, which is designed to help keep the base sealed to the floor whenever you're vacuuming bare floors, and hopefully keep it from kicking stuff behind the machine. We also have two wheels here for the high adjust mechanism. Although these, unfortunately, are not coated with rubber. That is something that I do think is a rather oversight of this machine. I think that if you're going to rubber coat these main wheels, which I do think is a great idea and something I really like about this machine, I think that these wheels should be rubber coated as well. Otherwise, even if you have these rubber coated, you still can potentially scratch your floors with these shiny hard plastic wheels right here. 
And also, because these aren't straight wheels, you can see they kind of angle in a little bit, that allows the front base to actually lean forward a little bit, especially while you're using tools, which has been a problem for my usage because it means that whenever I'm trying to vacuum the couch or otherwise use the tools, I have to essentially hold the handle and pull the machine behind me, otherwise it'll fall forward and this very aggressive brush will start burning into my carpet. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. If you have very delicate carpet and you're worried about having an overly aggressive vacuum that can tear up your carpets, this might not be the best choice for you. That being said, the offset of that is it does deep clean very, very well, hence the name Deep Clean Brush. So we do have a relatively good amount of deep cleaning here compared to the older Hoover T-Series, as well as many other machines that I have from companies like Dyson and you know various other machines that I have. This does clean very, very well, and the actual carpet cleaning performance is definitely one that I'm happy with. For this price range, this is a very solid performer if you primarily care about having a bagless machine that's somewhat maneuverable that can deep clean carpets. So, one other thing that I would like to mention is that this high adjustment mechanism, I already complained about the wheels on it a little bit and the fact they're not rubber coated and their shape is a little bit odd, but this actual pedal just, it feels really cheap. The entire you know, other part of this base actually feels pretty sturdy. There just really isn't much to complain about as far as the build quality. While the, the plastic does flex a little bit, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. It doesn't feel flimsy by any stretch of the imagination. However, these high adjustment wheels are not applicable in that regard. So I would say that for Hoover to improve this model in a future variant, I would say make this high adjustment out of a little bit more durable plastic and change out the wheels on these with ones that are flat and rubber coated to hope and maybe even stick out a little bit more. So that way that will solve the problem of the vacuum leaning forward and burning into carpets, as well as these wheels potentially having the opportunity to scratch hard surfaces. Now, I didn't have any problems using this on my floors without scratching my floors, but if you have very delicate wood floors, that could be a concern. So, moving back up, if we actually do recline this, we can see right here that there is a HEPA filter right here. We also see the swivel neck, how it does swivel like that. This HEPA filter has a little tab right here that just pops out and it pops out just like that. So this HEPA filter, to my knowledge, is not washable. It is replaceable. But in these HEPA filters generally last around every six months to a year, depending on how often you use your vacuum and how dusty your house is. Now this, this system does advertise the HEPA filter and the fact that the HEPA filter is up to the HEPA standards, 99 point something percentage of particles gets trapped into the filter. However, this doesn't advertise it being a sealed system. So if you have allergies, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this machine. I haven't been using it long enough to necessarily prove that the thing has any problems with dust emissions. All the seals on the machine appear to be good quality, and I think that for most people, if you really want a bagless machine with HEPA filtration in this price range, you should be okay, and this probably should be better than a lot of the other machines that would be competing with it, like the Bissell Powerlifter Swivel Pet, and perhaps even some of the Eureka units, although those I have yet to try. But... It, it is one thing where if you are concerned about having allergies, if you are concerned about filtration from your vacuum and you want really good filtration, you want a sealed HEPA system, I would recommend going with something bagged instead. But the HEPA filter on this does appear to filter pretty well, and there's not really much I can complain about in that regard. Now again, it's hard to for sure say, for sure say how good it is because I've only been using this for a few weeks, but... Obviously, over an extended period of time, I have not noticed any dust emissions from the machine. I haven't noticed the machine getting covered in dust. It stayed relatively clean, so there isn't too much to complain about. Looking up here at this bin assembly, we can see there is a button right here. and You just press that, and the entire cyclone assembly comes off. This is a dual cyclonic vacuum. There is a small gray button right here. You just push that over your trash can, and the entire contents of the bin will collapse into your trash can. Ideally, you'd want to empty this outside if you have allergies or anything like that. And when you do empty it, I recommend taking a damp cloth and wiping off the outside of the bin as well as some part of the inside of the bin just to make sure there's no dust on the outside of it that can then get blown out as a result of the exhaust. 
And that is one thing that is nice about the design of this machine, is that unlike a lot of Dyson machines where the exhaust is directly underneath the bin, because the bin is actually separated by the actual motor assembly from the HEPA filter, the HEPA filter is not going to blow any dust out from where the bin actually attaches to the unit. So I think that's another reason why I've seen very little in terms of actual dust settling on this machine, because the actual design for the filters and the cyclone setup has been very well thought out, and that's something I need to commend Hoover at. One of the things that I've complained about with a lot of these machines is whenever the cyclone entrance will run through the bottom of the bin, that's very bad because that means when you empty it and there is dust left over, that'll get sucked into whatever filter this is or potentially even the motor if the filter's in the cyclone. That's something I've complained about a lot with newer Dysons. This machine does not have that problem. In addition, unlike a newer Dyson, this is a basic dual cyclonic setup, so it's much akin to the earlier UK Dysons and the early Phantoms, where it's just an outer cyclone and an inner cyclone. There is very little as far as multi-cyclonic separation, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, because this has been doing a pretty good job of keeping the filter clean. You can open this up right here, and you can pull this entire cyclonic cassette out. Just pull it straight out of the bin. I'm not going to do it right now, because it has debris in it. But I will show another video that I'll record after this, where I'll actually take all this apart and show you how to disassemble this cyclone and get into it. So this whole thing is just held apart with screws. So it's very easy to completely disassemble this entire cyclone and clean it out, which is a very, very welcome feature. Also, this handle and the entire design of the bin and many other parts of the machine compared to the older Hoover T-Series are much stronger. On the old T-Series, this latch and this handle were very prone to breaking and just felt very cheap. This one does not have that problem. This feels very sturdy. In addition, right here, there is a filter. You just simply pull this straight out. You just simply rinse it underwater every three to six months as per these instructions, let it dry for 48 hours, and pop it back in. It's very, very foolproof, and I really like that. There's no, you don't have to twist it or you don't have to wiggle it or do anything stupid. You literally just push it in and it's in. Once you push it in all the way, do it until this little filter accordions a little bit, and that's how you know it's in all the way. And it's very, very easy to get it right. There really is little in the way for the customer to mess it up, and that's a feature that I really like. You can see it's a two-piece filter. After my extended usage of filling up this bin, there is very little on this filter. It is very, very minuscule as far as dust and any hair or anything on it. There's very little. So I have confidence that this filter will last a pretty good while, and I would probably say to wash this filter, usually per the instructions, perhaps even a little bit sooner, if you vacuum as often as I do. I vacuumed with this thing almost every single day. So there is a good amount of wear on this machine already because most people who will usually vacuum every week won't be using the vacuum as often as I do. So we can see that despite me only having this for a couple weeks, I've put a good number of miles on it. And once you, of course, you put that filter back in, you just simply line up the bin just like that. It'll kind of wiggle like this a little bit, but once you actually click it in up here, it holds into place just fine. And this is very sturdy. I've seen a lot of other bagless machines where you lift this up and this thing lifts and it separates and it feels like it's coming apart. This does not have that problem. So we can see when we actually compare this to the older T-Series, which I actually will grab real quick. I did mention that I was gonna do that later, but I'm actually just gonna do that now. First off, you can tell this handle, not very good. This handle, you can tell it lifts up a little bit. It wiggles a little bit. This whole thing just feels a little bit flimsy compared to this. It's not too bad, but you certainly do feel an improvement in build quality. Although this particular unit does have a brush roll shutoff for bare floors and above the floor cleaning, this one does not, unfortunately. And I have yet to see a unit with this design that has an actual brush roll shutoff. Maybe there is one and I'm just not seeing it, but everywhere that I've looked, I have not seen that. If there is one of those versions available, then I would recommend getting that over this and spending the extra little bit of money. But of course that depends on what I find. I will link this vacuum in the description and any similar models I find that are of note. So hopefully that'll help you find one of these. This one is not for sale anymore, so you can't buy this older version. And one other thing when you compare the old version to this, although these aren't necessarily the exact competing machines, they are slightly different slightly different models and slightly different price categories. This one has a cord rewind and a headlight. This one has neither of them. But again, there is a version of this that has LED headlights. And the nice thing is, is that unlike the headlight being on the machine, the headlights are actually on the front of the base assembly right here. 
which is very nice because it means that the actual part that'd be going underneath your furniture and actually running around the place will will be what's illuminating it and not just the motor housing which means the light might not even be shining into the area that you're actually trying to vacuum. So that is one thing that's really nice. Obviously, I can't test those LED headlights because mine doesn't have those LED headlights, but that's a very nice feature. If you want LED headlights on your vacuum, there is a skew of this that has that, and that's very, very nice. The other thing is that there is no cord rewind on this particular unit to break, and that is a nice feature. I actually do prefer not having a cord rewind. Of course, like many other machines, you have a quick-release cord wrap right here. So that just twists and you can pull the entire cable off and that makes removing the cord very easy. Winding up the cord is pretty self-explanatory. You have an upper cord hook right here that swivels and you have a lower, cook, lower cord hook right here that is static that does not move and it's very simple to use that. There is also a little cord clip right on here that kind of swivels and it's kind of loose. I didn't really use this because I found that because you had to put it like this, it would get in the way of the hose. So even if you wanted to then put it into this hook, it would get in the way of the hose and you have to pull the hose through and it was just kind of a hassle. So I elected not to use that. The way that I prefer to, to actually wind up the cord on this is where the cord comes out right here, which is on the bottom. So you want to make sure that you actually do have it round through the clip, otherwise you could run over the cord. So I would say run it up through here, right next to the extension wand. In between the hose and the extension wand right here behind the main hose and then clip it into the cord clip up here now this cord clip isn't all that strong I do notice that the cord does sometimes fall out of it but the advantage of that is it means that in order to clip the cord in here you're not tearing up the power cord because of how tightly it wraps onto it so there is a trade-off there just keep in mind that if you are holding this this could pop out pretty easily so if you are worried about that then one of the things I would suggest is just vacuum slower because you are supposed to vacuum relatively slowly when you're vacuuming carpets, but I know a lot of people vacuum really fast and they want to just get it done. That's not really good because you're not giving yourself your or specifically your machine enough time to actually pull everything up out of the carpet. But still, that could be annoying. If you are concerned about running your vacuum all over the place and this cord popping out, then I'd say once you put the cord in this hook, I would say hold on to the other to the cord with your other hand. So for example, in my case, if I vacuum with my left hand, I'll hold the cord with my right hand and vice versa. And another thing, if you do want the cord to not come out this direction, but come out this direction, one trick that I'll do is I'll wrap it around the handle like this and then clip it in on this side, just like that. So now if you're right-handed and you want to hold the cord with your left hand while you vacuum with your right hand, that makes it easier if you wrap it around like this. Of course, when you do it this way, you lose like one or two inches of cord, but in my opinion, that's not too big of a deal. So the cord is pretty self-explanatory. Power switch right down here. Not much to complain about. Now, headphone warning. I'm about to turn this on to show you how this switch works. So press this to turn it on. And then press it again to turn it off. Over here, we can see we have our hose. This hose goes down into the base. To remove the actual main hose for suction, there's a little button right here. You just push that, and the hose pops right out. There's a little clip right here the hose pops into, and now you have your hose. You just simply grip it right here by this plastic piece, or I'll usually grip it by the cuff right here, and you can put any of your attachments on the end of this hose. There's also a nice little guard right here for the hose, so that whenever you do have it wound up properly, that helps keep the hose from kinking. So we can see right there that actually helps reinforce the hose right here a little bit, which is nice. I've seen a lot of other vacuums where the way that this angles, that causes the hose to kind of get warped and messed up, and that can reduce your airflow and reduce the life of your hose. And then of course, once this is up in this clip right here, it just clips right in. There's very little resistance. It just pops in pretty easily. You just simply push this down like this and click it back into place. As far as your attachments goes, you have two attachments, essentially, well, three, three to four attachments, essentially. This is a two-in-one tool. Then you have an extension wand and a crevice tool. So, looking at the attachments, this attachment right here is a two-in-one dusting brush and upholstery tool. This just pops right off. For whatever reason, this part right here is removable, and I don't exactly understand why. There really is no point in this actually coming off. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but this little part does come off. You can see right there, you can kind of kind of pull on this a little bit, and then this little piece will come out. Okay, it's easier to do with two hands. But for some reason, this part isn't connected to this part. I don't understand why. The other problem is that 
this actual joint right here doesn't like to stay. Like whenever you have this up and down like this, this whole thing is very floppy. It's not very robust. So that's a bit annoying. There's a little release latch right here to remove the dusting brush and get access to the upholstery tool. So that allows you to do that. Upholstery tool has some little lint pickers on it, which do, do work very well at picking up pet hair. Although they do actually have a good amount of grip to them. So when you're trying to vacuum it off, then they will get stuck to these little, little felt strips. But that's not too bad. You can just kind of pick it off with your fingers and then suck it up into the vacuum. And it's not too big of a deal. So as far as this brush... The bristles on these are very nice and soft. There's really not much to complain about, although since they are very soft, they're very mendable. So if you get something stuck on this like that, then you might damage the bristles. So just keep that in mind. And also, since this is a very big opening, there isn't a lot of suction to go around. I do wish this opening was a little bit smaller, but the advantage of that is you are able to dust more in less time. So take with that what you will. To reattach this, there's a little groove right here on this upholstery tool. I don't know if you can see that. A little groove right there and it lines up just like that and clips back into place now the confusing thing is that you hear that click and you think it's in all the way but it's not see how there's a little gap right there you actually have to push on it and that'll snap it in one more time and now it's all the way in that's actually something that I struggle with in the initial impressions video I thought I had it in all the way and it actually wasn't on all the way so you actually have to push it there's essentially two latches there to get this to attach all the way and now it's actually on properly. So that is one thing you gotta watch out for. So while I'm not the biggest fan of the build quality of this tool, I do think Hoover needs to improve the build quality of this a little bit. I think it does a good job. I'm a big fan of them improving a standard or including a standard upholstery tool instead of a turbo brush because Hoover's most recent turbo brushes have not been the best in terms of actual endurance. Usually whenever you actually apply them to whatever service you're trying to vacuum, the brushes will instantly stop and there isn't much cleaning to go around. This upholstery tool, obviously since it's straight suction, it does not have that problem. And the actual felt strips that you saw earlier do a good job at removing hair and other debris. And as far as this brush goes, like I mentioned earlier, it is very good at dusting. There's not much to complain about in terms of its actual ability to dust. So as long as I can just improve the build quality on this a little bit, this will be a solid attachment. And the good news is that even if you don't like this attachment, this vacuum uses a standard inch and a quarter fitting, so any attachments from any of your old Hoovers, for the most part, or many of your newer vacuums will fit on this machine. So, and I'll demonstrate that in a sec. So, right here, we can see that there is a extension wand and a crevice tool. Crevice tool slides right out, just like this. Stores right inside the extension wand. Extension wand twists. You can see right there, oh, not on that side, right here, I don't know if you can see that, my phone is refusing to focus, there is a lock and an unlock, so if you take this little red dot and you put it in the unlock position, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, we can twist that just like that, and that allows you to extend this wand, and you can twist it back into the lock position, and that keeps it rigid. So this gives you a good amount of reach, especially when you put the crevice tool onto the end of it, but... You know, with the actual hose, there isn't a lot of reach there, but it's still a good amount. And you can always purchase extra wands separately and add them on to the end of this unit. So that is very nice. We'd like to take a brief break from this review to show off my beautiful cat. He is in loaf mode right now, and he's very cute, isn't he? Hi, Patches. He's a good boy. Anyways, back to our regu regularly, regularly scheduled review. One of the nice things I just mentioned about this Hoover is the fact that you actually can attach pretty much any attachment that you want to the end of this machine since it is a standard inch and a quarter fitting. This is the multi-angle dusting brush from a Dyson. It has the fitting that a lot of the older DC-07s, DC-14s, 17s, 18s, and all of those have. And if we actually pull this hose off with the aforementioned clip and pull this hose off, the attachment does fit right into the end of the hose. So we actually can use that. Now, when the, with the hose itself, the hose will actually fit over the connector for many of these attachments. Whereas once you put on the extension wand, they'll actually fit 
underneath a lot of these attachments and you can see the difference right there you see how the attachment fits over the wand but then whenever i put the attachment on the hose the attachment fits inside the hose so keep that in mind if you do have a standard inch and a quarter attachment and doesn't fit one way it'll probably fit the other way now speaking of the wand one of the things that i mentioned that i didn't like about this is the fact that this connector on the hose is a little bit deep so the only way you can really attach the wand is by excuse me sorry about that i my apologies i didn't extract the serum mist is that one of the things about this hose is that you can't really connect it very securely without the wand extended so once you extend the wand putting it in the unlock position and stretching it out and locking it again now it fits on tightly because you can see that the actual connector or the actual lip where the wand meets the second piece actually goes inside the hose when it connects like this you can actually see a little gap right there now don't get me wrong it is sealed properly there is no suction leaking from this from this part but it does make it a little bit annoying because it does mean that you really can't use this extension wand unless you use the entire length of it and that can get annoying if you only wanted to use this amount of length for a particular job anyways so just keep that in mind. Now, one little way you can get around that, kind of, is you can lock this wand at any orientation. You don't have to just have it be zero or 100. So you could just have it to where it only extends a little bit like that, and then it'll fit on the hose. Oop, ow, when I just pinch myself. <laughs> and that can also happen. You can pinch yourself if you don't lock this all the way. So if I redo that, that's one for the blooper reels. And if I just extend it a little bit and lock it in securely all the way, now it's not going anywhere. Now I can put it on and there's only a little bit of extension to it. And now it's not all the way extended out like I didn't need. And then now if I want to use that, although if I was going to use this, I probably would have the wand all the way extended out. So that's probably not the best example. But if I, for example, want to use the upholstery tool because I'm basically going to go upstairs with this, then this might be a scenario where you'd want that because you might want a little bit of an extension, but not the entire extension wand. It is annoying how you can't leave it completely unextended and attach it to this hose. You do have to extend it a little bit and then fiddle with the locking mechanism. So that is a bit annoying. That feels like that could have been thought out a little bit better. If just this part right here was just a little bit longer, I think that could solve that problem or perhaps make the connector on the hose a little bit less tight. Uh, to where it's not, you don't have to put it in as far to actually lock it in place. I think that could work wonders in terms of making this extension wand a little bit more usable with this machine. So, one of the other things is that when we grab this upholstery tool, that also fits on there pretty well. And this actually looks like it kind of fits in more. It, it, it looks like it is designed to fit onto this hose, whereas the other two attachments kind of feel like an afterthought. The crevice tool, not so much. That, that makes sense. The way that this sticks out looks like it was designed to, to go on there. The extension wand, like I previously mentioned, not so much. So it's still a decent extension wand. It is nice that you can actually extend it. You can't really extend it while it's attached, but you can twist it back in the unlock position, extend it all the way, lock it again. And then now, especially with this and with the crevice tool on, you can get a pretty, pretty decent amount of reach. You can see right there, there's a good amount of reach there. The problem is the hose doesn't really extend out all that much. It's enough to get like up to your ceilings and stuff, but if you have like an apartment or something, but you're trying to go upstairs with this and you're trying to leave this at the base of the stairs and stretch the hose up the stairs, which is the proper way to use an upright on stairs, you're not gonna do that with this. The hose is just not long enough. So if you do want to do that, you're probably gonna look for something else like the Hoover High Performance Wind Tunnel or the Wind Tunnel Max Bag. Those are machines where the hoses are a lot longer. You can pretty much get most of your staircase and then just very carefully have it set at the top of the stairs while you get the last bit of stairs towards the top. Otherwise, you're gonna be trying to balance this on stairs and with the way the wheels are on the front and all that, I didn't even try to use this on my stairs. I am not confident with the way that this would sit on my stairs and I don't think you should be either. So if you're buying this to use it on a very long flight of stairs, I wouldn't do that. I would either get something else or get something like a canister, like a very cheap canister to supplement this, like a Hoover Porter Power, a Vessel Zing, do with your Mighty Mites, use that for stairs, and then stick with this for your uprights, for your upright needs. And basically just use this to get whatever bits on your couch when you don't want to go grab your other vacuum. But as far as actually going up the stairs with this, this hose is not long enough. You can see this, it's fully stretched. Oh, and then of course the vacuum just falls over on me. 
so that is another little issue. This hose is top mounted, unlike the bag Hoovers as of late, like the Wind Tunnel Tempo and the Wind Tunnel Max. This hose is mounted up here, so you're gonna probably knock over your vacuum while you're trying to do anything as far as baseboards or anything down below. So keep that in mind. If you struggle with that and you don't wanna have to fuss with that, this might not be the ideal choice. Now, as far as actually attaching the wand and the crevice tool, we can actually look real quick and see. I'll go ahead and grab the camera and we can actually see how far this goes up. All right, so here's the machine. We're just gonna grab this. We're not gonna turn the machine on because I just wanna demonstrate this with the machine off real quick. But we can see we have the crevice tool and the telescoping wand attached to this. If we actually grab the end of the hose, oop, I just hit the tripod. And we actually try to stretch this hose out all the way. We can see that this, this does get a pretty good amount. So you might be thinking, well, this looks like a good amount. Here it is all the way stretched out. And you might be thinking, well, that's a good amount. Why, why, is, why is that not good enough to get up, you know, at least most of your steps? And the answer is, is because the suction will actually cause the hose to collapse back. I know when I actually tried to use this to clean up here in this exact corner, it looks like the hose is reaching just fine. There's a little bit of slack, right? But when you're actually using the machine, it does kind of fight you a little bit and try to pull back. And I'll demonstrate that right now real quick. <laughs> So you can see, it wasn't too bad, it was certainly, you were certainly able to deal with it, and especially if I had both hands free, and I was able to actually demonstrate this properly, then you you can kind of see how you could make it work. So if this is the highest, as far as above floor cleaning that you're going to do, this machine will certainly be sufficient, but because of the suction pulling it back, and more so the brush roll just wanting to dig into the carpet every time you pull this forward a little bit, then that's what makes it not very desirable as far as above floor cleaning. And of course, while I just did that, the crevice will just popped right off. But, you know, so it's not, it's not perfect. It's perfectly fine for couches or anything like that. I did use this to clean my couch. And as long as you have one hand on it to pull it back a little bit so the brush isn't digging into the carpet, it's certainly usable and it's certainly just fine. And of course you do have a clear hose as well. So whenever you get an obstruction or a blockage somewhere in the hose, it is very easy to find and know how to unclog it, or at least, you know, know where to start as far as unclogging it. Now, granted, this one is still new, so the, the hose is still mostly crystal clear, although after using this for a very short period of time, the hose will get cloudy, and it's not going to look crystal clear because it'll be coated with dust, but still, it's not too bad. And of course, as a little reminder for how to put these tools back, this is Dyson attachment, ignore that. This combination tool fits right on this post right here. And one thing I will say is that it doesn't actually push on all the way for some reason. And when I try to push it on all the way, it feels like I'm gonna snap off this post. So that doesn't fit on there super well. But the hose, and the extension wand, and the crevice tool all fit in perfectly fine. You just take the hose, wrap it around this hook right here, snap it into place. And I'll turn this around so you can see. You just take the extension wand, twist it into the unlock position. Again, it is marked on the wand on one side. Push it back in, twist it again to lock it. Grab our crevice tool, slide it into it right on the gray part. So you can see it goes black and red, then gray, then black. That's how you know how to put this on. Put it into this little post right here and snap it into place. And then once you do that, all of your tools are back on the machine as they should be. So. At this point, we've discovered pretty much everything we need to know about the machine. A couple other notes, this is a 8 amp motor on the vacuum, which is actually something I didn't initially think about because the way it sounded to me, it sounded like a 10 amp motor. So it'll use about the same amount of power as a lot of modern vacuums in this price range. So you will be using a little bit less power than an older vacuum that might be 10 or 12 amps. So, I mean, I guess if you vacuum every single day for a year, you might save $17 on your electric bill if that so um, then again with everything being pretty expensive right now every little bit does help so maybe that's a selling point for me the thing that's more notable is the actual noise and the noise isn't too bad it's still relatively loud it is a cheap vacuum after all you're not gonna have a conversation with someone at the exact tone that I'm talking to you guys at 
while the vacuum is running, it's just not gonna happen. Especially if you're trying to run this on carpets where you can hear the brush or run it on floors where you can hear the brush or pretty much anywhere where you'd be using the actual brush roll because the sound of it digging into the carpet and agitating it does get a little bit noisy and that adds to the noise as well. I don't have a decibel meter or anything like that, so unfortunately I can't measure sound, but it's not horribly loud, but it's not quiet either. It's exactly average, it's what you'd expect. The one thing I do like about it is that it does sound a lot better than a lot of the Bissells and Dirt Devils uh, in this price range, and even Eurekas as well. Those motors, even though they're the same 8 amp motor in terms of amperage, those are usually a lot higher pitched, and in my opinion, they sound a lot worse to listen to because that higher pitch for my ears sounds a lot, a lot louder and a lot more harsh. Now for some people, it's lower pitch no uh, noises that sound louder, so it really just depends on, on your ears, how you particularly would uh, interpret it, but for me, this does sound better than things like the Bissell Power Lifter and you know even like the Eureka Airspeeds and anything like that, so it does sound better than those machines, and I would prefer to listen to this vacuum than those other ones, but there's not that much of a difference. It's, it's not so much that I would say buy another vacuum over this or buy this over another vacuum for that reason, but it is something interesting to note. The sound, it's relatively average. It sounds like a vacuum cleaner. There's not really much else to say, especially in this price range. You're not gonna get anything super quiet. If you want a super quiet vacuum, I don't know, get a Mila, get a central vacuum or something like that. But you probably would not be shopping for those in this price range. So in this price range, this is about as good as you're gonna get. So with that in mind, we have pretty much, oh, the last thing, I forgot to mention this. This is, off, off, after all, the flagship feature of this particular machine, the swivel neck. This is the swivel model, after all. And as far as looking at the swivel neck, it is pretty good. Now, like I mentioned before, you just simply step on the front and that allows you to recline it. It does make kind of a weird click sound that honestly sounds like it's breaking, but that has not changed in the several times I've used this. So I'm hoping that's just how it sounds because it's new. But regardless, you can see I can actually swivel the main body. And this one thing that is, this is one thing is that you can swivel it. And the swivel neck on this is actually pretty good. Like there really isn't much to complain about. Now granted, it's not as swivelly as other units, but for the price range, it's exactly what I would want out of a swivel neck. The nice thing is, is that this handle, and I'm mentioning this now because this is in part related to the maneuverability, this handle is very nice, and it's actually metal, too. This is a metal handle, so when you actually are using a swivel, the entire machine feels rigid, it feels well-built, especially compared to other machines, even from companies that I've liked and that I still do like. For example, Bissell. The Bissell Powerlifter Swivel Pet. One of the biggest complaints that I have with that machine is how poor it is to swivel. The swivel neck is not very good on it, the handle is not built very well, and the entire thing feels like it's falling apart when you maneuver it. In fact, one of the Dysons I just got recently, which is a much more expensive vacuum than this, although my particular version is a little bit older, that one also, the body swivels and has a lot of play in it when you're trying to simply use the swivel neck, and that does make the experience a lot worse. It makes you not want to use a swivel neck because you feel like you're about to break the machine. This machine does not have that problem whatsoever. You simply put it down, the swivel neck, it's very simple. So for example, if I start from this starting point right here, and I go to turn it, it doesn't turn all the way. You can see it, it's not it's not turn on a dime level as something like the Dyson ball. So you can see it's not, like it only goes that much. So it only will go about a 45 degree angle. But at the same time, I would rather have a relatively rudimentary swivel neck that works good than a swivel neck that works all the way and swivels very well but comes at different compromises to the rest of the machine. This machine does not have that. The actual way this swivel neck is built reminds me a lot of the Black & Decker Air Swivel, but believe me, this is built way, way, way better than that machine. And it's, it's a night and day difference. That machine is built very poorly, and this machine is built a lot better, and it's not that much more expensive than this. So there's, you know, that Black & Hundred. There really is no comparison. It's a, I wouldn't even say it's apples and oranges. I would say it's, you know, <laughs> more like peaches and asparagus in terms of actual difference between the quality of the machines. So the actual build quality on this is very, very good. And especially for a machine in this price range, you do not expect very good build quality. 
you generally expect the machine to feel cheap, you expect it to feel like it's falling apart. This machine does not have that problem, and that's something that I really, really liked about this machine, and that I cannot stress enough, that it is, it was clearly, for the most part, with a few exceptions that I have mentioned, like the high adjustment wheels, lack of a bushel shut off, the combination tool, you know, those few things notwithstanding, the build quality on this is very, very, very good. And that contributes to the swivel neck being very, very nice to use. So this thing, while it doesn't swivel a whole lot, it swivels good enough. And I'm very happy with the way the swivel neck is on this. The whole thing feels sturdy. It doesn't feel like you're gonna break it after a short period of time. This actually does feel like the machine that if you take care of it, it's going to last a very long time. At least that's the way it feels to me. And I've handled a lot of machines that, have, that are cheaper and built worse than this and have still lasted five, 10 years. I've handled machines like this that are not built as good as this machine are, is I should say, and some of those machines are still running 20, 25 years later. So you really can get a machine like this and make it last. I've heard so many people in the industry say that you have to spend a certain amount of money for get, to get a machine that lasts. It really is not true. And while this is still not a machine that I would buy, even though I did technically buy this one, it, it's because I would because in, in my opinion if you are spending money in this price range you should spend the money on a bagged machine but at the same time if you really want a bagless machine this is a very solid option because the filters the, the cyclonic filtration on this is really good the dual cyclone works very well the filters don't get soiled all that quickly especially compared to something like a shark or some Bissell machines this the actual uh, bin capacity is very very large as you can see right there this thing is very very full and you can actually fill this up a really good amount the actual design of the bin and the capacity is very well thought out so if you are concerned about having a bagless machine in this price range that has a really good capacity this is the machine for you How, however while the swivel neck works very good the metal handle is really nice and the overall build quality is really really good I think the final thing that most people would mention is, is this worth it? And, oh, I just noticed there's a little piece of piece of fuzz on the ground. Is this worth it? Is this worth the price? And I would say, hesitantly, yes. Now, the reason why I personally wouldn't recommend it to some people is because of the fact that it still has the issue where when you're using the tools, because of the design of the height adjustment mechanism, the machine will fall forward a little bit. Like you can see that the hand, you can't really see it, but the handle is angled towards the front. It's actually leaning forward a little bit. And that's a problem because if you're trying to use the tools, it's gonna sit and burn on your carpet. I resorted to every time that I use this machine on my couch, I've essentially put a mat underneath it so it doesn't burn my carpet, but I should not have to do that. So if Hoover, could just fix the issue with the height adjustment wheels, make the height adjustment wheels better quality and make them a little bit bigger and more elevated and rubber coat them. So that way it keeps the base up off the ground and or, and or ideally and, but also or, maybe make two different SKUs, also add a brush roll shut off for the people that want a brush roll shut off and make this combination tool, this dusting brush upholstery tool a little bit better quality and if they could just do those things, I think there was a, was there a third complaint I had? I think that was pretty much it as far as my complaints. If Hoover could just fix those two problems, this would be literally the best machine in this price range. If Hoover could just fix those two problems, this would be the best machine in this price range. And this would get my wholehearted recommendation. And hope, the good news is that those things aren't too complicated to engineer onto this machine. So Hoover could very easily make an updated version that fixes those two problems and they would knock it out of the park for this machine. And considering this is a fresh design and those are the only two issues with this machine, especially one that hits this price point, I am very, very impressed with what Hoover was able to come up with. And I gotta say that if these are the kind of things that Hoover is coming up with in the future, I am very much looking forward to it. I know some people looked at the video that I did on this at first and said, oh, this thing looks like a cheap piece of crap. It really is not. When you actually feel this thing, it's a sturdy machine. It's got a metal handle. The actual base assembly is really rock solid. 
The only thing that feels cheap on it is the combination tool and the high adjustable wheels. That's it. Everything else feels like it was well thought out. It feels like it was engineered properly. It feels like it was really, really properly thought out. And, you know, I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit, but I want to drive that point home because I really do think this is a solid machine. But at the same time, that issue with it leaning forward and burning into carpets, that's, for me, that's a deal breaker, unfortunately. Now, if you have a lower pile carpet and you're not worried about that, or you don't use the tools as often, or you don't mind having to put a mat underneath it so it doesn't burn the carpet, then by all means, this is a great option. If you're looking for a bagless machine in the $100 price range that has decent maneuverability, has decent build quality, decent filtration, and a large capacity with a good amount of attachments, this is a great option. And while, unfortunately, I don't really think this is one that I'm going to keep in the collection, specifically for the reason of the machine falling forward while using the tools and burning into carpets, I think that once Hoover addresses that issue, or if you have a house where you're not too concerned with that, then this is, this is a great unit. So this machine is definitely one that I can recommend for for a good amount of people um, because of that because of the brush roll issue I'm not quite sure if this is going to make my like go-to recommended list I still think that the tempo is going to kind of stay in its in its spot on this list and I do think that the previous Elite Rewind that was in the same price range as this the Elite Rewind Plus I do still think that because of the issue with this Falling forward on carpet, I do still think that that is a better choice for the time being. Um, I really hope that model doesn't get discontinued because the whole house rewind and the elite rewind plus those machines are still on the market. And because of this issue with this falling forward on carpets, I do think that that's probably the way to go. Even though there are things on this machine I like better than those. I think once Hoover addresses those problems with this machine in like a Gen 2 variant, this will easily be a pretty solid, I don't really want to say upgrade because if you have one of those older Elites Rewinds, there really is not much of a reason to upgrade to this. You know, it would basically just be replacing it with a machine that looks different, but otherwise is the same. But at the same time, you know, if you are looking for a new machine and you want the features that this machine has, like the large capacity, like the decent cord, like the decent build quality, and the HEPA filtration and all that, this, you can certainly do a lot worse in this machine. So, you know, is it something that I would buy? You know, like I would actually buy again because of the issue with it leaning forward on carpets? No. But other than that, I am still pretty impressed because this is a brand new machine after all. There's, there's only so much you can complain about. But Hoover, I do kind of feel like some testing with that, with the base and the high adjustment mechanism would have been nice. But I'm sure that's something that you could easily improve. In fact, I can't imagine that isn't even a part that you can just retrofit onto these old machines because this does pop out very easily. The high adjustment mechanism looks like it pops out very easily. So if you guys could just release a new high adjustment mechanism as a part to replace this, so then everyone that bought this machine, if they're having problems with this leaning forward, you can just send them a high adjustment mechanism and that would fix the problem, then that would be fantastic. And that would be something that I would greatly support because that would fix that design flaw with this machine and make it very, very, very solid. So I think I've rambled on enough. I think I kind of driv drove that last point home as far as you know the few little issues that I had with it. And I don't want to harp on it too much because this is still a pretty solid machine. And like I said, if you are looking for something in this price range, it is pretty solid and a pretty decent choice and definitely a good value. So with that in mind, this is Intellitech Studios, my full review of the Hoover Max Life Power Drive Swivel XL. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions on this machine, please be sure to drop those in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. And beyond that, there isn't much else I can say about this. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this real quick and sign out. Peace.
also just noticed is that the belt is now starting to squeal a little bit, which is not great because this machine is not that old. So I'd say definitely keep good watch on that because again, this is a stretch belt. There's, you know, you very easily could stretch out the belt on this. So I would say if you can find one of the units with a brushful shut off, maybe get that. Although one of the advantage, advantages, I should say, of it not having a brushful shut off is it means that there isn't another mechanism in the machine around this area that could potentially fail like I have seen on some of these Hoovers. So you win some, you lose some. Anyways, that's it. See ya.